So Brian Hansen won silver in the 2010 Winter Olympics. He's also medaled in other world championships. He could train anywhere he wants to. So why has he always picked Milwaukee to sharpen his skills? Brian Hansen joins us now on his past wins and more on what a day is like in the life of a skater pursuing Olympic gold at this winter's game in Sochi, Russia. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So exciting. Well, let's talk about a little bit. Let's, let's kind of go backward a little bit, how you first got involved in skating and kind of how you got to this point in your life. Okay. Um, well, I played hockey when I was younger and uh, a family friend actually thought that I might enjoy speed skating. So she just kind of recommended it to my dad and I tried speed skating at the Northbrook Speed Skating Club, which was, I started a short track. What age was that uh, about? I was, I was nine. Nine, nine or okay. Ten. Yeah, when I started speed skating. And then I met my coach, Nancy Sweater Peltz, who's a long track speed skater, um, shortly after. And that's kind of how I got more involved in long track. Um, Does she still coach you? Yeah, she still does. Okay. So, how many guys um, who've won an Olympic medal have female coaches? Um, not, it's less common. It's m much less common. I don't know how many, but uh -huh. um, you know, you know, it in speed skating. I mean, it's girls and guys. We compete in almost the same events. So, um, you know, having a female coach doesn't make too big of a difference. Um, you know, it's the same technical aspects and, you know, she's been my coach for so long and been around the sport for so long that she knows, you know, a lot about this, you know, what to do in um, different situations. So, you know, it's been, it's been a huge help having her and having a coach, the same coach for that long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I bet somebody who's seen you kind of grow and change and knows all of your strengths and mm -hmm. your weaknesses can really, you know, kind of pinpoint where you need to be coached the best. So um, you've won before. You're hoping to make the team again this year, go again in February. You have your chance to coach anywhere in the world. I mean, you can coach in Salt Lake City. You can be mm -hmm. in, or train, sorry, mm -hmm. in Salt Lake City or, or here in Milwaukee at the Pettit Center. Why do you always choose Milwaukee? Um, well, I mean, it kind of goes back to high school. I had the option to move out to Salt Lake City, I guess, early on, and I would kind of have to leave my high school, my high school friends and my family and change kind of my lifestyle. So staying here in Milwaukee was huge because, you know, I could still be with my family and um, I didn't really have to um, kind of go away from, from home. Mm -hmm. um, and a part, of, part of what was really helpful in that is my parents drove me up from school at almost every day after school. Well, it was around four times a week to five times a week, and it's an wow. hour and 15 minute drive, two and a half hour round trip. And so it was a huge commitment on my parents' part to kind of help me out and drive me up to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, without them, I couldn't have done it, so. Yeah, so now you have to win Olympic medals <laughs> because your parents put so much yeah. into getting you trained in here. What was it like to win an Olymp Olympic medal at last winter's games, especially um, as part of a team? Yeah. Oh, it was definitely really cool. Um, you know, I didn't know, I, w I had no expectations of winning a medal. You know, I had hopes of winning a medal, but we were definitely underdogs. Um, there was, you know, a small chance we were going to beat the Dutch, who their team was, you know, more, probably more stacked at the time than we, our team was. But we, uh, we had a really good race, and, um, and we beat them, and that put us in the gold silver medal round, which is where we won silver. And, you know, I think it was, it was I guess, all I could have hoped for at the Olympics. So I mean, were you able huge. to like absorb each moment and like the, the, the flag ceremony and those yeah. kinds of things or does it almost just seem like a, a flash? Um, at this point it was it's a flash. I mean there's just so much that happened and it's just a jam-packed couple of weeks that that like I mean I can I go back and I can re still remember every moment of it or you know more moments from those two weeks than I can from probably any other two weeks in my life but mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it was just, it was, I would still describe it as a flash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back this year and training, you know, uh, to hopefully make the team again, do you think it gives you an advantage or, or is it harder because you've already been there and you've got so much on the line? Uh, I mean, there's an advantage and a disadvantage, I'd say. Uh, the advantage is I kind of know some things to expect. Yeah. Um, the disadvantage would be that I don't have the... Um, well, I mean, I guess either way it could be considered an advantage. I don't have the pressure anymore to try to m make the first Olympic team. You know, I'm already an Olympian. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of more nothing, less, there's less to lose and more to gain. You seem like it's kind of a low-key guy. How does somebody like you get that um, competitive, like, fire to get out there and, like, kind of go for it all out? Because, uh -huh. I mean, training must be 
What's it like for you? Is it almost like a full-time job? Yeah, training's definitely a full-time job. Um, I mean, I train 10 workouts a week. And and what's your workout? I mean, is how much time on the ice versus off the ice? Uh, it's usually five workouts a week on the ice, five work for five workouts a week off the ice. Okay. So how long are those workouts? Uh, they're usually about an hour and a half a workout, but then there's also warm up and cool down, and that can also take another hour to hour and a half a and day. And do you eat perfectly, or do you eat some junk food? I wouldn't say I eat perfectly, but um, I mean, I, de I definitely eat junk food. I think like part of the difficulty is just making sure I eat enough. Um, you know, there's always, there's never enough, like, time in the day to get everything done that you want. And sometimes it's hard, hard enough just to get your meals in and stuff and make sure that you're recovering after workouts and you're ready for the next workout. Mm -hmm. Are you going to come back if you make the team and let us know? Yeah. All right. For sure. So excited. Yeah. We're very excited for you. Um, we want to make sure that everybody can fi follow you on your journey to the Olympics again this year. So here's how you can follow Brian. Um, he's at brianhenson2014.com, or you can follow him on Twitter at Brian T. Hansen there. And also the Olympics are on NBC this year starting February 6th. That's where you can follow him. Hopefully we'll be cheering you on to Olympic Yay. gold this year, right? Thank you, Thank you so Hopefully. much for being here. It was great to have you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Brian. It was awesome.